Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. I know you have a ton of choices here on the crazy internet, so thanks for doing this. Uh, we're going to start with a countdown. Of course, with these countdowns of things you don't like, a lot of people leave comments, well, you suck too, and you were never in a band that sold millions of dollars of records. I know that, but it's just fun to say stuff that sucks sometimes. Yell at the clouds, angry man, I just turned 50 last week. <laughs> that was fun. It's fun to be half a century old. So the criteria is that if you're listening to rock radio, the classic rock radio, and you're driving, these songs will make you tear your shoulder out to get to that radio dial really quick to change the station. These songs suck. So these are the top 10 songs that suck. Rock songs from the 80s and early 90s. Now all these songs were singles. They were released as singles. I don't have any of them because these are songs I don't like. Nor did I purchase the uh, musical rights to play them. Uh, you can look them up and see how how bad they suck yourself. All right, let's go with number 10. Now this is a, we have two for number 10. It was a twofer, it was a tie. There's so much sucking that goes on, there's a tie. They both were released around 1993, so about the same time now, early 90s was an awesome, awesome time for music. There was so much happening. It was like greatness and then really suckiness. So these bands contribute to the suckiness of it all. It's a tie between Counting Crows, Mr. Jones, it's just a horrible, if you're going to go R and be funky, do that. If you're going to go rock, do that. Or if you're going to do both, do them good. But it just is, is soulful rock. So I don't know. I never liked the Counting Crows. And then Hey Jealousy by the Gin Blossoms. Hey Jealousy is going to be the only song on this top ten of songs that suck that I actually saw perform live. Uh, I was in uh, visiting some friends at Bush Gardens in Tampa. This is like ten years ago. And they were having a concert at the park, and it was supposed to be the Goo Goo Dolls, I believe, who have some early, talk about a great band early on. They couldn't show up. Gin Blossom showed up. And I was bored, and I had to wait for my friend to get off of work, so I watched them. And, of course, they played Hey Jealousy, because it was a big song. And it just sucks. Have any, they're originally from Arizona. Have any good bands come from Arizona? There's a punk band called Mandingo. Other than that, I can't think of any good bands that ever came from Arizona. I don't know if it's heat stroke, what happens in Arizona, but y'all produce a lot of suck. Also from 1993 times, number nine, Two Princes by the Spin Doctors. Uh, the video, the guy had a dumb beard and a stupid hat. Uh, well, it looks aside of how stupid the group looked. The song was just bad. That was a bad band, like this funky, rocky. I think they even called them alternative rock. Alternative was just meaning crap rock for them. Alternative should mean good, like indie alternative. Hey, that's good. Spin Doctors, you put that on, it's just crap. Um, I was seeing uh, this girl at the time that had the CD, so I had to unfortunately listen to the song over and over, and she broke up with me around Christmas. Who breaks up with somebody around Christmas? Especially me. I was a catch in the early 90s. But in a time with her breaking up with me and the, her having that CD, and the fact that that band and that song really sucks, that's number nine, Spin Doctors, Two Princes. Number eight, first thing coming from the 80s, 1989, A Girl Like You from the Smithereens. I don't know who they payola to get that band. Uh, I think it was like their third album. They were from the East Coast. Uh, all these young 80 bands, so like that, and you have these older dudes, or they looked older. They're doing the sunglasses trying to hide the age thing or something. Uh, but I'm 50. But anyway, they were just not good. And I don't know who they paid to get their song up on the charts, but I, I would like to think that people really weren't listening to that. It was just a crappy song. A Girl Like You, Smithereens, number eight. Also in the 80s, 1987, this is the 19th album from this band, so they should have learned somewhere between album number one and 19, we're bad, we should call it quits. A band that I just love to hate, The Grateful Dead, and all their little hippie followers that smell like truly oil. Uh, Touch of Grey. I think it was the, possibly the only single they ever had. I don't know. I just don't like the band. I don't like their jamming music. I don't like when you're starting a band, you're like, hey, let's play some songs. There's always that one idiot that comes over, usually wearing a stupid hat, too, and a beard. Hey, let's just jam for a while. No, I don't want to jam for a while. Learn a damn song and let's play it. So these jam bands, I just don't like. Number seven, Touch of Grey by The Grateful Dead. Number six, came out in 1991, Life is a Highway by Tom Cochran. Uh, he was in Red Rider. I do have a Red Rider album or two. That was good stuff. And then he went solo. And then what the hell, Life is a Highway. And then some uh, new country back. Ugh, I hate new country, pop country, country rock, whatever that crap they're calling it. Uh, Rascal Flats. That's a stupid name. They did Life is a Highway. It just made it even worse. So I think the combination of the two times that song came out, Ugh. Number six, sucky song, 
Life is a Highway. Number five came to us around 1985, which again was a great time for music. Unless you were Robert Palmer singing Addicted to Love. Uh, man, what a big warm piece of crap that song is. The, the refrain hits you all times, addicted to love this, addicted to love that. And it's just, even the cutesy girls with the pale and the red lips and the little MTV video swaying from side to side, they couldn't even help it out. Now, Simply Irresistible, which is a, a single around that time as well from him, using the same girls, that was okay, okay at best. But, uh, man, number five, Addicted to Love by Robert Palmer. I'm fifth. Now, number four, 1984. What a great year. Unless you are listening to Smuggler's Blues by, by Glenn Fry from the Eagles. Uh, it's not a really good smuggling song. It certainly isn't good blues. It's just, this, I don't know what. The 80s had so much great stuff, but then they would scrape up this crap and throw it at you, too. And it would hit the charts sometimes. And Smuggler B Blues did. It's just not good. Now we're getting to the top three. I hope you're agreeing with me that the past seven or really eight songs really did suck. Now the top three surprised me and I'm harder on them because they're from people that should know better. They're from people that have contributed some damn fine rock songs uh, for the most part. So they should know better. That's why I judge them harder. That's why they're in the top three. Do you like these songs? No, you hate these songs. We hate these songs. Number three, 1987, Ragdoll from Aerosmith on the same album that the horrible Dude Looks Like a Lady song came from. Permanent Vacation, that album was called. They should have taken a long vacation around that time. I don't know what was going on. Ragdoll's stupid little video, him driving around in the car, but video aside, it's just a dumb song. It's it, it, it's not rock. It's, not, it's just a crappy little, it should be a throwaway song, but somehow they released it as a single. And like I said, it could be interchanged with Love uh, love in an Elevator. That was from the album uh, after that. I think that's a, another crappy song. Aerosmith was so good early on. What the hell happened in that band? But um, I did like uh, the slower song Angel from this album. That was all right. But yeah, Ragdoll and, and Do Looks Like a Lady. Like I said, it could be interchanged. That's, that's a ugh, big pile of suck on that one. Number two came out in 1989. Running Down a Dream by Tom Petty. Man, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, those first few albums, really up until 89. That's a damn fine rock, but one of the best American rock bands ever, ever, ever. Probably one of the best things that ever came out of Florida, for crying out loud. But then he comes out with this uh, Full Moon Fever album, it had Free Fallen. Ugh, that's another one that I just don't like. It's For him, it, his bar's up here, man. Tom, he was Tom Petty. Great stuff. Free Fallen, just a boring little song. Running Down a Dream, uh, co-written by Mike Campbell, the guitar player. That's stupid rip. That is the worst. We used to, I was in a band, we would practice in one end of the block, and the other end of the block, this other band would practice, and they would play that song all the time, and I hated it. And they would practice it over and over, and I had to, oh, I had to hear it. Oh, it's bringing back headaches. It's bringing back headaches. It's one of those songs you just... What is going on? This is just dumb song. Running Down a Dream by Tom Petty, number two. Mike Campbell, who's the guitar player from Panama City Beach, where my wife pretty much grew up and lived a lot of her years. Panama City Beach, Florida. It's fun. It's good for oysters. He also had a good part in writing the number one song. And I bet you can't wait for that. Number one. Sucky song from the 80s and early 90s. Hands down, when this comes out, I throw up. Boys of Summer by Don Henley of the Eagles, his little friend Glenn Fry. Now, this is Don Henley's solo album. It hit actually number five on Billboard's Hot 100, which shows you how good Billboard's Hot 100 can be at times. Another one uh, from the album uh, Building the Perfect Beast or something like that. Well, he wrote the perfect sucky song. And it's the same album that contains All She Wants to Do is Dance, which is one of the worst songs. Actually, um, I don't like the Eagles very much at all, but I was watching one of their concerts on TV and actually played that close to the encore. Like, hey, Don, let's play some of your crappy songs. Not like the Eagles don't have enough songs, but I would have been pissed if I was that kind. I would have thrown a shoe up on the stage. Don't be playing that crap when I'm trying to rock out. But anyway, all she wants to do is dance aside. Boys of Summer. What an annoying, bad, piss poor song. Um, it was redone by the a band called the Ataris not too long ago. 
Um, and that's alright version, but it's just that song has been ruined for me. I don't like it at all. Congratulations, Don Henley. You wrote the worst rock song of the 80s and early 90s with Boys of Summer. Thanks for watching.